This is my 2011 Range Rover Vogue 4.4 TDV8 that I purchased during the height of lockdown in December 2020. And aside from a few age-related niggles, Start, you vicious bastard! It's been the perfect, comfortable daily driver. Although the L322 is about as close as it gets to daily driver perfection, there's always room for a few little improvements. About eight months ago now, I uploaded a video to my channel called Six Awesome Quick Cheap Upgrades That You Can Buy For Your L322 From AliExpress. As that video was such a rip-roaring success and a lot of you guys actually went out and purchased your own AliExpress upgrades, I've got three more for you guys here. We're gonna fit to the L322 today. But first, really quickly, YouTube tells me that over 70% of you guys who watch my content aren't subscribed. Do yourself and the channel a big favour and hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss out on any of my new upcoming Range Rover content. Cheers! So the first upgrade I've got to do today is this big black slab of plastic here. Um, some of you guys might know what this is and it is actually the third level brake light that goes up here at the top of the tailgate. Um, as you can see on mine, hopefully, it's kind of faded. It was originally nice bright red, like similar to the tail light colors. Um, because they're positioned on the roof, they get hit by that UV sunlight all the time and the red color fades and they look a bit nasty. I actually think some of the LEDs that uh, sit in a line along here have actually failed on my light as well, which we'll give a quick test in a minute, um, just to give a before and after. Um, but this is gonna replace that. It should look a bit smarter. It's nice and shiny and black, so it should match the paintwork. Um, and we should have all of our LEDs working again. So hopefully you guys can see that LED top tailgate light working. So as you guys could see there, a couple of the LEDs on this right hand side definitely dead. Not really surprising considering the car is over 10 years old now. And these things do have a finite lifespan, so we'll get it switched over. Um, as it's actually mounted in this, what they call the top spoiler on the top rear tailgate, we're gonna actually have to remove this whole, um, or at least loosen this whole um, plastic unit up here, which is quite easy to do. And then once that's off, we should be able to access it from underneath here. So we'll give it a go. So first job is actually to pull off this interior plastic, which is just held on with some clips. Mine's been off a couple of times before for other jobs, so it's probably going to come off a bit easier than yours might, but just keep pulling on it, loosening those clips and it should all pop out. So now that's out of the way, we can get to these 10 mil bolts that hold that top spoiler on. You can actually get to these without taking the plastic off, but I find it access is a bit easier if you do remove it, remove it. And also, I think there may be some wiring in here that we need to access for the top light. So we'll have a look anyway. Now bearing in mind, these guys here are additions, my own additions. So for you guys, this might be a bit simpler, but I've got some wiring running underneath here that are connected to these lights. So a bit simpler for you guys who don't have that. So now those bolts are undone, all we've got to do is pull this forwards or backwards, depending on your perspective, away from the vehicle and it'll, uns it'll unslot itself. So, so once you pull it towards you, it should lift up and away. As I said, I've got a couple of extra wires under here that you guys won't have. So, uh, so what that allows us to access is this row of screws along here. There's four of them which hold the light into the top uh, tailgate trim. So we'll get those removed and then the light should be free. We'll just have to figure out where the wire runs and how it's plugged in. So it's gonna be a Torx T20. And I'm just gonna start taking these guys out. This is basically the first sunny weekend day that County Galway has seen for probably a couple of months now, hence why you can hear mowers and strimmers going on in the background in November. The Irish are a funny lot. So there's our four screws removed. Should be able to just pull this away and should come unclipped. So there's our unit there. Okay, so the wires are running through there, coming out here and then they're popping through this grommet here and then into the lower tailgate. So we'll have to follow this wire underneath and see where it leads. So the wire we're actually interested in is this guy here that's in this clip with, uh, with a few other ones here. So this wire on this side comes from the, the light unit itself, comes through a grommet in the top tailgate and then goes into this clip here. So, so this is the wire that's coming down from our 
top light bar and this is the wire that's going into the car's loom that would be obviously feeding it. So unfortunately the connector on the new light doesn't actually fit this guy, it's a slightly different style of pinned connector so it's not going to go on there unless we completely butcher uh, one or both of these um, plastic connections on the end. Now this might be because uh, this connector varied throughout the years of the L322 and this part, new part might be suitable for the earlier ones or something along those lines. Um, I mean the connector is fairly similar but not quite the same so just different enough to cause a problem. So my plan in order to maintain the vehicle wiring and make sure we don't make any changes on that end of the system we're going to cut this connector off of the old one and we're going to either solder it or crimp it onto this uh, this new uh, light unit here so basically it should plug in as normal. You'll also notice this grommet on here which will definitely need to be replaced on the new one um, to make sure that we keep our uh, top tailgate nice and watertight there as well so let's take these inside and I'll make a start. Now, as any of you guys who watched my live stream earlier this year will know, soldering isn't my strongest skill. But all the same, I was able to get the two pairs of wires soldered together securely and covered up with a nice bit of heat shrink. Not forgetting to pop the rubber grommet back on afterwards. So again, that's our new unit soldered up with the original connector on the end. And um, before I go to the trouble of reassembling everything, I'm just going to plug this in directly to the wire underneath, and we'll give it a quick try just to make sure everything's working as it should. So um, let's do that now. Just balance that up there for now. So hopefully you guys can see. I can't. I'm pressing on the brake pedal. So I'll check the footage, that all seems to be working okay, so I'm just going to reassemble it now and the main point to make sure we get right is to get this grommet back in the hole where it should be, um, as we really don't want any water coming in from under that uh, top trim piece and getting into the rear tailgate, either into all these electrics or into the tailgate itself um, and into the boot obviously, so let's get started on that. Um, I'm going to start by unplugging this and threading the wire back the way it should be from the top down. Okay, that grommet back in position again. We'll adjust how much wire we need to thread through in a second. So here's our original wire. And then we just need to come back underneath. Okay, so pull that through. Get all these situated back in their clips. Pop that back in there. And that should be that. So with that done, it's all nicely installed in there, looks good, nice and straight. The next tricky part, especially for me with my extra cabling under here, is getting this guy secured back in position. There are two rubber cups, one on each side, that kind of need to slot onto a, uh, a knob, for want of a better word. You need to push this back into position to make sure it's locked. When they're both in position, you shouldn't be able to lift either end of the uh, top tailgate. So that's that. Let's go back underneath, put our bolts back in, and that's that job done. Old spindle's getting a bit floppy, might be another job for the list. But I'm pretty happy with that. That has smartened up the back end a bit. It would look a lot better if I gave it a clean, which I might do this afternoon, depending on if the weather holds out. But yeah, really happy with that. This cost about 39 euros delivered to my house here in Ireland from China, from AliExpress, and I'll leave the link in the description below. So that first mod took a little bit more effort than I thought it was going to, um, but all, all in all, not too bad. A little bit of soldering required there, but I think it's worth it for the end result. Um, the next mod is going to be something, thankfully, a lot easier. Um, this is a little bit more bling that we're going to put onto the Range Rover. So you may have noticed, if you own an L322, there's quite a lot of courtesy lights around the vehicle, and it's one of the things that adds to the luxury feel of these cars. 
one of these lights that you might have noticed is as you open your driver's door, a light projects from underneath the door onto the ground. And this is obviously in order to light up any puddles or anything else unsavory that you might be stepping into without realizing it. Now, being that the L322 is a bit of an older vehicle, the bulb that they use as standard for this is just a small incandescent bulb, which does the job okay. But being that it's 2022 now, nearly 2023, we can do a lot better than that for very cheap. So on more recent high-end vehicles, you may have noticed when you open the door, they actually manage to project a logo or an image onto the ground below as you open the door. So not only is it lighting up puddles below, so you're not going to step in them, but it also looks pretty cool and adds a little bit of bling to your Range Rover. So that's what these are. We're going to retrofit them in. Basically all these are is an LED light with a small projector lens and a small image in there that it just projects down onto the ground. And it's a nice little touch. This should be a really easy fit as well. So a bit difficult to show you this as it's actually on the bottom of the door, but basically all we're going to do just pull it away at the front, unplug the wiring, making sure it doesn't disappear into the door. Take our new replacement and plug it straight in, which the connector should fit straight away. And you can see that's working immediately. And you can maybe see on my hand there, the logo it's gonna be projecting. Tuck that end with the connector up into the door and then just push it back and press it up into the door like that and that is that done so obviously it's daylight right now and i'm on gravel so it's not the perfect place to show it but i'll insert some footage here to show you what this looks like and the price for these was nine euros delivered direct to my door and as a bonus these rear lights are actually the same ones as fitted in the rear doors so although they're a bit of a strange angle you can actually upgrade these to leds as well if you want as well so the next upgrade is also LED lighting, and it's actually one that I said I wasn't going to do in the last video. This is actually one of those very cheap kits that you can get to do all of the interior lights on your Range Rover in nice bright white LEDs. And the reason I said I wasn't going to do it is because I actually prefer a kind of softer, uh, yellower light on the interior. It's not too, too kind of blinding on your eyes when you get in in the dark. I also seem to have some dead bulbs in the Range Rover as none of my map reading lights, which are these more focused ones here, seem to work at all. So we'll see if we can get them going by replacing them with these. <clears throat> so we're going to start by trying to access these uh, these guys in here um, just because it is a bit annoying that they don't work at all so so basically to get this guy down we're going to be using our plastic trim tools that I've recommended to you guys to get loads of times in the past I'll put a link in the description down below but these are going to make it really easy to prise that down without causing any damage like that so to replace these bulbs it's actually very very easy we've got these little turn to remove bulb holders so you guys will see there's a little bulb in there and this holder basically just has to turn 90 degrees in order to release it so once we've got that out we can pull out our original incandescent bulb which is just one of these kind of uh, push-in types forgotten the proper name for it i'll put it on the screen if i can remember and then we'll take our new replacement led pop that into the holder like that and then simply pop it back into the housing, screw it 90 degrees, that's that, done. Do it three times, we should have full LED lighting. So that light quality is actually quite nice, it's quite a yellow, uh, you know, natural kind of light. Um, I think when I chose these on the website, I actually selected the 4300K light temperature, which would explain that. Um, so yeah, that's quite a nice little addition there. It should go in the way it came out like that and that is a nice job well done and you may have noticed very sensibly on the l322 that the rear reading lights are exactly the same as the front ones exactly the same unit so it removes in much the same way so we're going to move it the same way we did in the front get our fingers in there unplug that and then again we've got these three little capless bulb holders to remove and replace see those go, those look actually pretty nice and yellow as well that 4300k uh, color temperature i think is a lot nicer than the 6000k ultra white stuff that, uh, that a lot of people fit to these cars so this kit that i got was one of the cheaper ones it also came with a trunk light um, if you guys remember i actually fitted um, some all new led units in the back anyway you might be able to just about see over the back uh, some white light emanating from back there um, those lights are far superior to this bulb replacement. Um, they're absolutely fantastic, especially in the winter when you're driving more in the dark and you're opening your boot in the dark and you can see exactly what you're doing back there. So definitely a really good, uh, worthy upgrade, I would say. And I'll put another link in the description to those guys uh, so you guys can check them out. So we're not gonna fit this guy, we'll throw it in the box and maybe use it with something else. But the kit also includes glove box lights. So you've got one large 
kind of festoon bulb in there and then another capless, smaller capless one. And it also came with four vanity lights, which are these kind of, uh, they almost look like fuses. Of, I don't know the correct name for them either, but maybe we'll try fitting those and we'll see how we get on. I always remember back in the day being really impressed with cars that had these built-in vanity mirrors, especially when they had these little lights built in as well. I think that's a really nice touch. Um, it's of course something that I use very often to check my teeth and check my hair before I go out anywhere. Um, so I think upgrading them to LED might be quite a nice solution. We're gonna save a load of power obviously by doing this. Um, so I think these guys will come out just by basically in your tool in behind the lens. Oops and then it basically should just pop out like that. You can see our little uh, fuse cap bulb type of thing going on in there. So I'm just gonna see if I can get this to switch off because it's gonna be quite warm. And pop this old one out using this guy. And we'll pop in our LED replacements. Just check to see that's working before we go any further. Things with LEDs, you do have to get them the right way around, so make sure we get this guy in the right way around. And there we go, Jesus, that's bright. <laughs> okay, so this, hopefully with the lens, it's not quite as bright as that, um, as otherwise it is gonna be blinding the uh, passengers that use these things. So, so let's pop that lens back on again and see how that looks. That in like that and yeah that is quite bright <laughs> so if you guys can see the difference there between the incandescent and the led bulbs this might be on the verge of being too bright actually it's definitely an upgrade from this one and the color temperature is also quite nice but i think that might be a little bit over the top especially at night uh, when we're opening these up but nevertheless, I'm going to install, install all four of them. We'll install them on the passenger side, which is often used by the missus. We'll see what her thoughts are, and if she approves, they can stay in. Oof. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You're definitely going to be able to see if your lipstick's applied properly by using these things. I think you'll be able to see into the future with these things. So as you guys can see, I've already got one of my super bright white LEDs in the footwell here, which is really good. Lights the footwell up really nicely when you're getting in in the winter and in the dark. Um, the other one that hasn't been upgraded is this guy and this guy is quite a nice light because it kind of lights up the entryway to the vehicle as you step in um, so i think this could definitely benefit from an upgrade um, so to pop them out i'm just going to get our plastic prizing tool kind of work our way around pop it out pretty easy and then we can disconnect our plug twist to remove the actual bulb itself which is another one of these capless ones it's nice and hot it out like that and we'll take our led capless replacement pop him in we'll just check that i've got that the right way around and there we go i have so we'll pop this guy back in again put that in there pop him back into place and that's a nice little upgrade in terms of lighting power and light quality um, Talking of power, we're actually probably going to save the battery a fair bit by replacing all of these incandescent bulbs with LEDs. The power consumption of these is obviously a lot less than the incandescent bulbs. So if you're working on the vehicle like I do quite a lot with the lights all turned on, this might be just enough to save your battery. Um, so yeah, that's probably going to wrap it up for LEDs on the inside anyway. I'm actually way happier with these interior LEDs than I thought I would be. The key, I think, is definitely picking the 4300K light temperature ones. If, like me, you don't like the bright, sanitised look of 6000K white light on your sumptuous Range Rover interior. And that's going to wrap it up for this episode. As before, I've left all the links to the products down in the description below. If you get a chance, check out my Teespring and Amazon Affiliates page below for Range Rover themed gift ideas. And leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Cheers!